what up guys gibbs is back we got some rocket league june updates there's actually lots of stuff happening during this month from retail release june patch end of season two pillars season three rlcs jumanji mrs doubtfire and more robin williams classics to come so let's just get right into it first we got the retail release this comes at the end of the month for europe it actually uh it goes into july for north america so june 24th europe july 5th for north america big deal with this is it comes with four new cars that for at least a little while like i'm assuming a month uh, those cars will be um, exclusive to the retail release. It's supposed to be coming to PS4 and Xbox One, possibly PC. I'm not 100% sure on that one. But look out for it in stores if you want the new cars or uh, you just want to support the devs. There's probably going to be other goodies as well that have not been announced yet because it is like the collector's edition. It'll definitely come with all the DLC minus probably the DeLorean and Batmobile. But definitely look out for that if you're a big rock league fan like me i'm gonna be buying it i'll do an unboxing and all that as well problem is i get it two weeks later than uh europe so you probably won't even need it at that point but it should be pretty cool on to the next thing new in-game quick chat so this is part of the patch that's supposed to come out later this month they haven't said a date i would assume at least before the retail release you would think the patch would line up with that so then you, you could see the new car models and stuff like that if they're not in the game already. So I would not expect later than June 24th, but I could see on the later half, like between June 15th and June 24th is my uh, guess right now. Who knows? It could be out like right now as I'm recording this because science is crazy. Anyway, so one of the things they wanted to add in for the patch, new in-game quick chats. So um, as you can see, now you can actually adjust all of your 16 quick chats. And I have all the text commands on the right side. I will also have links to all this stuff in the description if you want to look at it uh, through their, through the Rocket League channels or through their blog and all that stuff. So I'll have all that up there so you, uh, you can look at it in a better setting than this video. So, just going through the text chats, all yours, calculated, go for it, great, clear, holy cow, imposition, incoming, my bad, my fault, need boost, nice block, nice one, no way, okay, oops, savage, sick, wanna play, few, or view. Yeah, that's a weird one, few, few, like, I thought it was few, uh, I don't know. Then there's also post-game commands, so this is four new commands that you can only do during the post-game. There's everybody dance, which we'll get to in a second, GG, nice moves, one more game, rematch, that was fun, well played what a game so that's pretty cool that you'll be able to customize what you want to say because now when i want to say great clear i used to have to say like nice shot but it's like it didn't really work so like i'm definitely going to be using great clear for sure holy cow will probably get on there because i love cows uh savage pro eh, I, like, I don't know like i don't want to add anyone that that are bad connotations so i'll have to look around through these and figure out what i want to do with my text commands I'll probably put an image of what I use, I guess, on my Twitch if people want to use it. But like I'd say like pick the ones that you like and, and go with it. Next, here's the post-game spotlight. So this is what that chat command was talking about with Everybody Dance. Uh, now teams, uh, when they win, they get to do a little dance. Most importantly, though, is they get new titles onto the bottom, which is, means they're tracking more stats. Which I like this because they might actually show these stats in the post-game scoreboard. Maybe. Maybe there'll be multiple pages. In SARP, there used to be multiple pages of uh, stats like first touches. As you, uh, you can see for Storm on the right. Um, tactician with two centered balls. like That'd be really cool to see all these stats in the post-game screen. So we'll see if they actually show that or not. It might just be on this screen, which I'll be a little disappointed. Uh, they said it's like 20 plus titles that you can get in the winner circle basically and then you can dance so you'll expect me to see some turtle dance and always turtle dance and if i'm allowed to air roll then i will be turtling all day every day 100 percent of the time next new rocket labs map pillars this map looks sick like on the right you can see more of like the goal to goal facing there's two giant pillars i'm in the middle of the map so it's gonna make it a lot harder to navigate at the same time, though, they're kind of big, which almost makes them just like another wall to play off of. Like, those little squares are not uh, 
a drivable through. Uh, plus, the ball can't go through those. Those are flat. It's just hard to tell in this picture. You can kind of see it in the left picture a little bit more. There's like a grading on it on that first big window. Uh, so that's the back side of the uh, pillars. And I think this could be a lot of fun. Like, it's going to be hard to clear it out of your zone because if you hit a pillar, you're going to be in trouble. And then, like, you can also go up these walls and start um, an aerial a little bit quicker and go for that shot off of these middle pillars, which should add some exciting gameplay. We'll see how it plays out. Right now, it looks like it'll be a defensive map. Most of the maps so far have been defensive. And I've kind of had a problem with, like, maybe they should expand the goals when the maps are a little bit too defensive to make it even out a little bit more. Um... For at least competitive play, because then that would make more sense for um, for it to be a little bit more exciting. Because right now, like, Cosmic, uh, the net's actually smaller on that map than the default. And it has that backstop, like, that ramp to block most of the shots. So, excuse my nose, it's a little stuffy, so my voice might sound a little weird. Um, super excited, though. Like, this is what I want to see out of Rock Labs. More cool maps. So, you can expect this. Also, um, in the June update, as well as... End of season two rewards, anybody? Look at them, all synchronized GIFs or GIFs. I, like I say GIFs, but whatever. Uh, so this one, you can't actually see what I wrote on the top. So I'll take my webcam off for a second. End of season two rewards based on your highest earned rank throughout the whole season. So if you had grand champion, you can lose it and still get the grand champion title. That's the only one I didn't put on this page because all because all it is um, all it is a title. So there was no cool GIF to uh, go with. Oh, it looks like some of them are faster GIFs. I don't know. Who, who knows what's going on anymore? I can't tell. I'm getting dizzy from just looking at these. But if you go Prospect 1 or higher, then you get the boost in the top left. It's like a white boost. Uh, then you go Challenger is more gold. Rising Star is more blue. And Champion's more purple. It's the same boost. A uh, little bit more effects, maybe, on the Champion. One, it looks like it, but it could just be because of the purple color. Um, but the cool thing is here, if you get to champion, you get all four boosts. Like, you don't only get yours, like, the last season when you only got your crown. You actually get all of the boosts, and I'll put the, the webcam back on so it might freeze for a second. You actually get all the boosts, and then if you're grand champion, then you get a title as well, which hopefully it's purple color in, instead of gold like every other title. I would assume it would be because, like, moderated titles are green. PAX Champion actually might be the same color as, like, ESL Champion and MLG. I'm not sure. Hopefully they do purple. But since it's, like, you don't have to worry about deranking, guys. Like, play to your heart's content. Try and get up there. Like, if you're a champion and you want to get the Grand Champion, go for it. Because you'll still get that champion reward even if you fall out of champion at the end of Season 2. That's the big thing compared to last season when you had to be in that rank at that time. So... Feel free to play as much as you want. And let me put this back on so you don't see my Windows taskbar. And we'll continue. The other thing with the end of Season 2 comes Season 3. Season 3, there's a skill wipe completely. All players in MMR will be reset along with their rank. Everyone's going to start at the exact same spot. And the reason why they're doing this is because they're trying to figure out how to fix their ranking system. But right now... It's been going since the preseason, since, like, the game first came out. Uh, players have been up there this entire time. So, uh, they just want to wipe it, see how it plays out, so they can collect some data to figure out what they need to fix to make it better for the top-end guys, but also, like, in the middle, like, make sure, like, everything's working properly. So, I expect to see some races to Grand Champion, some streams, maybe. Like, that'd be a lot of fun. Depends on the timing with RLCS. But you could see some pros just uh, just doing some long streams, trying to be like the first to Grand Champion in solo threes or threes or whatever. So that should be exciting to watch. Uh, and I think like this is what we need. Like I think maybe not a complete skill wipe after this one, but like you get halfway reset back, and then everyone races again to Grand Champion. Like personally, like, I would love it monthly, but we'll see what they do. Like, I would rather shorter seasons keep the game enticing. Right now, like obviously pro players have had a hard time with ranked, so they most of them just have stopped playing ranked. Uh, but this should fix that for the meantime, and then we'll see when people get back up to their normal rank how it works. And Psyonix will look into probably fixes of the entire system for Season 4. Hopefully it's a shorter time span. Not a big fan of these super long seasons. We'll see how it goes. But kudos to Psyonix to listen to all the players from pros to prospects. 
this should help a ton. Next up, Smurf fixes. There's tons of Smurfs right now. It's a main problem. So the Smurf definition that I like to use is when someone that's like a pro will say, or a grand champion will say, he makes a new account and then he plays with his friend that's, say, champion to boost that champion up to grand champion because now their average MMR is going to be like challenger and they'll face two challengers when they're both like champion level and they'll boost that guy up to grand champion because he's getting much easier games and they can win every single one plus he still gets points for it um if they played on their normal accounts they would face other really tough opponents and they won't get that many points for a win plus they might lose a lot for a loss so that's what a lot of players are doing which i'm not a big fan of uh, so this is more about that. So what they're going to do is on Steam, the family sharing accounts, they will not allow to be queued for competitive playlists. So that means because right now, like you can just family share with a brand new Steam account and you basically like uh, can play the game for free on that account. So you don't have to buy it again. Um, so this will stop that. That's the easiest way to Smurf on PC. PS4, you can just make multiple accounts, same with Xbox One. I don't think there's a way for them to solve that. They aren't solving it here, but it's more of a PC problem than a console problem usually for the Smurf fixes. But there's other Smurf fixes for the uh, those consoles as well, which we'll get into right now, actually. Parties will no longer uh, be allowed to play in the competitive playlist if their skill difference is greater than three tiers. So every single rank has a tier. So from Prospect 1... Tier 1, or maybe Tier 2, uh, depending if Unranked is Tier 1, um, to Prospect Elite, which would be like Tier 4. Now you have to be within three tiers to play in competitive, which means even if uh, they were on a console and they smurfed in Prospect or Challenger with a champion, they would not be able to play with each other. So the example I have is a Superstar is a Tier 12, can play with a Rising Star, which is Tier 9, but not a Challenger 2, which is Tier 6. So the Rising Star could actually play uh, with both of these guys on his own, just not all together. Like, they wouldn't be able to make a, a team of three because there would be six tiers between the highest and the lowest. So you have to be within three. You can play unranked uh, with any tiers. It doesn't matter. They just want to make competitive a little bit more fair, make the point values not go crazy. Uh, the only problem I have with this is lately with matchmaking like near the top level you actually like say you're grand champion you'll play with like all stars or superstars which means they were uh technically outside of the tier three of three tiers i should say but you're actually going to wind up playing against them so we'll see if they fix that uh because right now that's how that works so that could happen where you actually face lower than three tiers because at the top there's so few players we'll see how that works but at the same time that's like a one percent problem and not much you can do when there's only one percent of the uh community that that you can be matched up against so we'll see how they fix it but i think that's what they're trying to do here with the data wipe just trying to figure out where everyone stands and then figure out where they want to go from here but these are great smart fixes i am glad uh, these are coming in because right now twos and team threes it does not matter what your rank is because it's just all Smurf City. The only ones I ever looked at were Solo and 1v1s. 1v1s can be also tricked if you really try, but for the most part, it's fine. Um, yeah, so this should be really, really good. I'm really, really happy with these fixes for sure. All right. Next up, RLCS Qualifier 2. Signups are open right now. I think they're open for a week. So if you're watching this after a week, you're screwed. So say like June 7th. I'm not sure what date it actually closes. So don't, you know, we'll say June 4th to be safe. But open qualifier is now over two weekends instead of the one super long one. So on June 11th and 12th, you will play until the top 128. So North America would be June 11th. Europe would be June 12th. This is not casted by the studio. So I, like I'm not flying out to LA. We're not doing any of that. There might be other casts like, or players are allowed to stream it, of course. So feel free to watch your favorite players as they stream to get into the top 128. Now, uh, like remember the top two teams from each region do not have to play in this. So that's Cosmic, Kings of Urban, Weedem Girls, and uh, Flipside Tactics. So those four don't have to play in this. They already have a buy into the group stage. So you won't be seeing them playing in these. But then, 
The next weekend, June 18th and June 19th, you play in the open qualifiers, the final. The top 128 play until six spots from both regions make it into the group stage. This will be casted. I'm not sure what games we're casting yet. We'll see how it goes. I hope we get the later games and we get most of the like elimination games, but we'll see. Sometimes those like loser brackets can take a while, so it kind of screws up the studio cast. I assume we'll get a lot of the winner bracket ones for sure, though. So look out for that. That should be a ton of fun. Can't wait to see who who makes it. See like if there's another team solid that comes up out of nowhere to uh, bounce out some of these heavy hitters. And then group stages is the same. It's over two weekends. That they're both studio casted. June 25th, June 26th, July 2nd and 3rd. Online finals, July 9th and 10th. So, of course, like NA plays on Saturdays. Europe plays on Sundays, as always. And it's on twitch.tv slash Rocket League. Definitely check it out, guys. It should be a ton of fun. Uh, I'll, I'll be there again. The whole cast and crew that was there for Qualifier 1 will be there again. And we're just trying to improve every single stream. I hope you guys are enjoying it. And, uh, you know, like, if you have any concerns, feel free to put them up on Reddit. Just do it, you know, in a civilized manner. And... We read everything, so uh, thanks for the support, though. So far, it's been awesome, and we can we hope to make it better and better as we go. And that's it. That's all I have for the June updates. That was a ton. That was a long video. More news to come because there's gonna be more stuff for this massive patch that Cyanix has said. So look out for more stuff coming in this patch. And again, there's E3. Now, last year we actually. A uh, Rocket League was on E3 for like five seconds for the press conferences. I wonder if they announced stuff at an E3 press conference. Since the game got so big, maybe one of the uh, developers wants them to like come up. Like I'm going to shy on the side of like no, let's like, say 40% chance that they'll actually have a, a time slot like, in these press conferences, but it seems like it's a slow year. Of course, we're playing this now, who knows with the big news that comes out. But I could see Rocket League being up there. That would be awesome to see, like, new patch stuff for that. But I doubt it. But still, I'll check out E3. Maybe they'll have stuff there. Who knows? I have no idea. But until next month, maybe I'll do these monthly. It depends on the month. Right now, we have a lot to talk about. So I figured I'd do, like, a June update. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see you guys in Season 3. Fighting for that Grand Champion once again. I'll see you guys there. Later.